revered monks of the Ramakrishna Order, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to this very happy occasion on account of the delivery of the Ramkumar Gangadevi Sarawi Memorial Lecture by none other than the Chief Executive Officer of the Prasad Corporation, Mr. Dohar Sikhar. And of course, prior to that, uh, we have uh, one or two other things to do. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome, on behalf of the Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture, to the Vivekan of the Hall this evening, Sri Johar Sarkar. Johar Sarkar, at least two people here in Calcutta, needs no introduction. Uh, as you know, he used to be an officer of the Indian Civil Services and uh, served uh, the Kada for many years before taking over the mantle of his new avatar as the Chief Executive Officer of the Prasad Bharati Corporation last year in uh, February 2012. Just prior to taking over the charge of the Prasad Bharati Corporation, he served as the Secretary to the Government of India of the Ministry of Culture for no less than three and a half years. He studied at St. David's School, Kolkata, Presidency College and Calcutta University. He also studied at the University of Cambridge and Sussex and did a course in New York. He is a graduate in political science, has two masters in sociology and history. You will be happy to know that he was, while serving the West Bengal Carter as a civil services officer, he was the moving spirit behind the Kolkata International Film Festival from 1997 to 2005 and has organized several film and media related programs with participation from several countries. After he joined the IAS in 1975, he had had several very important postings and he was the youngest director of industries for the state. The notable positions that he served in the state was uh, that of the Chief Electoral Officer and the Principal Secretary Department of Industries and the Secretary, Principal Secretary for uh, uh, for higher education. He returned to the Government of India in 2006 on promotion as additional secretary and became development commissioner for micro, small and medium enterprises with the task of reforming the sector. He was then elevated as secretary to the Government of India to head the Ministry of Culture where he initiated long pending reforms and modernization of museums, archives and libraries. He has also had stints, two short stints as secretary Ministry of Information and Broadcasting uh, to the Government of India. He was successful in forging many cultural partnerships between India and several countries. He received the first ever British Museum Award for piloting museum reforms. Uh, we would be happy to know that uh, this is the 150th anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. Under the stewardship of the Prime Minister, he has been Member Secretary of two committees one is the National Committee and another is the Implementation Committee for the celebration of the 150th anniversaries of two of the greatest Indians, incidentally Bengalis, Rabindranath Tagore and Swami Vivekananda. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, in short, is Sri Jawahar Sarkar for you, the Chief Executive Officer of Prasad Bharati Corporation, out here uh, this evening to speak on the brighter aspects of, of media as part of this memorial lecture. May we uh, request that Sri Jawahar Sarkar be kindly escorted up here on stage. <laughs> up here on stage, of course, is our very own Secretary, the Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture, Vivek Swami Subhanandi Maharaj, that is here for him as well. And uh, we are due to be joined in by the president of this evening's program, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University, Professor Shurandran Das, who will be with us in a, in a while. Uh, we shall now uh, garland Sri Jawahar Sarkar and the honors to be done by the Secretary of the Institute. Books of the Institute and a floral tribute to Sri Jawahar Sarkar. Books of the Institute. 
suppose that the institute has been presented to Sri Sarkar. May we now request Swami Supranana Dhiji Maharaj, uh, Secretary of the Brahma Kashmashan Institute of Culture, for his welcome address, please. Om Janani Sharadam Devi Niram Vishnam Jagatvaru Adhapadmitayo Sittva Pranamahamino Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> this evening we have in our midst right now one presidential and very soon we will be joining another presidential professor Suranjan Das. So I simply call them Presidentials without adding any adjective before their names, before presidentials. Because any adjective like outstanding, unique would be superfluous, would be redundant for the presidentials. This I learned in my college days. Four of my teachers who taught me economics were from the Christian's college. They used to tell us that if anybody has to become somebody in the public life, he or she must have some connections with Christian's college. That may be a very tall claim. But we all subscribe to that view. Diplom Babu has already told you about some of the achievements of Mr. Jarosaka. I met him years back at Vikas Bhavan, Kolkata. He was there in the higher education secretary, <coughs> principal secretary. I had a very peculiar experience that time, peculiar sense, in the sense that I didn't expect such an outlook on behalf of such a great officer. I was in the principal of Narodhapur College. We had some problems. We narrated everything to him. He assured us of the remedies. And we wanted to know when we shall be meeting again. Not necessary. Meeting, personally meeting, not necessary. He will write. Write his letters? No, not even that. He will write emails. Emails? That would go for years. And that worked. Communication through internet and email is the easiest method, the cost less, and the cheapest method that we know. And he is in favor of that. He is not going to harass anybody. And he had he had in that time this he had in in his mind in that time the idea of spreading this practice. And by the grace of God, he has received the portfolio which he is now holding. See, he is now big officer, chief executive officer of Prasad Parvati. He has to popularize that. Sometimes we do not do that 
on some obvious reasons, maybe. But he's in favor of the utilization of this gift of science and technology, glorious gift, I should say. And he works, I should say, he talks. That is his beauty. So a few months ago, we visited him once again in New Delhi. Wanted to visit, but he again insisted to write emails. And a few minutes ago also, he was suggesting another gentleman, you write emails. He is always the same. I welcome him. I welcome, of course, well in advance, Professor Swayamdhan Das also. He is a presidential and also an Oxfordian. <coughs> so, yeah. He had his PhD from Oxford University. Very simple man. So simple that, so approachable even, that if you come to him with some big claims or big some list of things that you want to <coughs> get done by him, maybe some impossible ideas, he would never say no. If you say, he would ask, what do you want, Swamiji? If I say, I want the moon. I mean, chance that, oh yes, you will get it, wait. Such an optimistic person. I also welcome him, very nice months. I welcome all of you. We are going to have several functions before we will be having the Ram Kumar and Ranga the Memorial Lecture to be delivered by Sri Jabal Sarkar. The topic is brighter aspects of media. So brighter aspects, the thing, the gift, the very precious gift that science and technology has given us would make media really brighter. I think it has quite this term brighter very consciously in that he or who we might not be having any idea of the brightest because science and technology is still evolving. Where it will the rest we don't know. I welcome you all, dear students, gentlemen, and of course, respected, respected ladies, the Samis also, the <coughs> men coming from Prasad Bharati, working in Calcutta, in various departments of it. With these few words, I once again add on my hearty welcome to Mr. Sarkar and also Professor Surandandas. Namaste. Thank you. Mr. Dear Secretary of the Institute, we, shall, we will now have the privilege of uh, launching the web portal, as you see it's here. Uh, this web portal has been launched on the 150th uh, anniversary of the Swami Vivekananda and the Swamiji Archives with financial assistance from the uh, Ministry of Culture Government of India. To tell you about the web portal, a, a brief introduction to the web portal, may I welcome Swami Yadavendra Nandaji here, after which the web portal will be inaugurated by Sri Sarkar. After that, Swami Yadavendra Nanda would come up and briefly take you through the web portal. Swami Yadavitra Nandaji. Salutations to Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. A good evening to all of you. The Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture has developed a web portal exclusively on Swami Vivekananda as a part of the 150th birth anniversary celebrations of Swamiji. 
the web portal is a gateway into the world of Vivekananda and in course of time will have a variety of information on various aspects of the life and works of the Swami and the influence he created in all spheres at the national and international level. It covers a wide range of subjects and the contents are being derived from various sources. We have for the time being loaded the contents at hand and we seek contents from various sources for placing them in the web portal. The ultimate aim of this web portal is to create a worldwide interest in the universal teachings of Swami Vivekananda and make available to the world at large all possible literature and associated accessories for the enhancement and enrichment of knowledge about Swami Vivekananda. The, this portal will also act as a source material for all research works done on Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda's message is universal and is meant for all people. It aims at the overall improvement of man physically, mentally, morally and spiritually. It endeavours to spread universal brotherhood and create mutual understanding and cooperation between individuals and nations. With a view to securing a better and brighter future for humanity, this is a humble attempt to bring Vivekananda into the lives of all the people of the world. The web portal has been developed by Sanju Solutions Private Limited and can be visited at www.vivekanandaarchive.org. Sri Jawahar Sarkar, CEO Prasad Bharati, who will deliver the Ram Kumar Ganga Devi Saravati Memorial Lecture, will now formally launch the web portal. The web portal that you see in front, on the left side, there are a series of topics which are further classified into subtopics. We have topics on works by Swami Vivekananda, then works on Swami Vivekananda, reminiscences on associates of Swami Vivekananda, on footsteps of Swami Vivekananda, all the places which Swamiji had visited. And then we have a date-wise chronological events in the life of Swami Vivekananda. This is a work being done by our research department. In by Swami Vivekananda, we have quotations, tales and parables, poems, lectures, prose, <coughs> Swami Vivekananda on various personalities, and Swami Vivekananda on various subjects. Coming down, we have provision for exhibiting Swamiji Vivekananda for the various age groups, for youngsters, for the youth. Coming further down, we have many other things. In the middle, we have an interactive platform through which the public can ask questions on Swami Vivekananda and we will reply to those questions through email. There is an audio gallery, a video gallery and then the complete works of Swami Vivekananda is also accessible through this web portal. So this is in brief the web portal that we have developed. I hope 
all of you will be benefited by this by this web portal thank you thank you very much julia bahanachi i'm sure that this new web portal of the vivekananda archive that just been launched by the CEO of Prasad Bharati, Sri Jaya Sarkar, will go a long way in fulfilling the desires that we have had to learn more and more with Swamiji and to connect our lives with the life of this great man. I have a small apology to make. I really do not know how I, being associated with Guru Darshan for more than 20 years now, have made this mistake of calling Prasad Bharati as Prasad Bharati Corporation. It's actually called Prasad Bharati, and it's not really Prasad Bharati Corporation. Prasad Bharati, the Broadcasting Corporation of India. I apologize and I stand corrected. Why do we now uh, introduce the Ram Kumar Gangadevi Sarangi Memorial Lecture? Uh, the, uh, the, the staff from Prasad Bharati would kind of operate on the computer to set up the lecture. This is in brief the introduction of the endowment lecture. The Ram Kumar Gandhadevi Sarawaki Memorial Lecture to be delivered by Sri Jonar Sarkar, a retired member of the Indian Administrative Services, currently the Chief Executive Officer of the Sarawaki, the Broadcasting Corporation of India. Ram Kumar Sarawaki was born in Rajgar, a small town in Rajasthan in the year 1911. Ram Kumar's father, Mahadev Bal Sarawaki, was a noted trader in Kolkata. Ram Kumar joined, as was the practice of those days, his father's business at a very early age. Not of much formal education, though, Ram Kumar G had an inquiring and reflective mind, which indeed led him to an ascetic life after voluntary retirement from business at the age of 60. Deep religious and innate nature, Ram Kumar G wanted diffusion of the religious impairment, with the emphasis on the discovery of truth enshrined in our Shastras. He spent most of his time at the feet of the late Tulsiji, the Jain Acharya, whose new dispensation for all has been the Anupvarath movement, the movement for application of the doctrine of small vows for fashioning life. He was, his was a life of meditation and self-effacement in search of the eternal value while leading the life of a household. That's nice. In recognition of his role, he was awarded by Acharya Sri Tulsi the distinction of Jaina Ratna a year before his Mahasamadhi in 1991. Ram Kumarji was essentially a man of renunciation and also of service. He dedicated his life to the service of the community, entertaining within himself Swami Vivekananda's and Mahatma Gandhi's ideals of trusteeship. One requires wealth, but not for one's own enjoyment or possession. This was part of the lecture's introduction, Ram Kumar Sarawaki. You would know that this is also called Gangadevi Sarawaki. Now, Gangadevi Sarawaki lived between 1915 and 1996. She represented the most values of Indian womanhood, not only for raising her family, as also for doing everything conceivable for serving the society. She was a believer in austere living and in the fundamental principles enunciated by our rishis that anything which is not necessary for one's own personal use will be made over to the needy. To perpetuate their memory, Gobind Lal Zaragi, the youngest brother of Ram Kumarji has sponsored this memorial lecture. We are proud and privileged to have Sri Jaya Sarkar, a retired member of the ISC of Prasad Bharati, to deliver the, the 2013 Ram Kumar Gangadevi Sarawi Memorial Lecture. He will speak in English on the brighter aspects of media. Sri Jaya Sarkar. Respected Swamiji. Uh, respected seniors in the audience, my friends, I see quite a few of them. Okay, uh, It's always nice to come back home. I look for an occasion to come back to Calcutta. My present job doesn't permit me so much flexibility because Prasad Bharti has under it 
470 uh, radio and TV stations. Out of which only two are located in Calcutta. So the proportion is a little unbalanced if you look at it. I am extremely grateful to the mission and to the Sarah Memorial for this uh, opportunity. There were two specific reasons why I wanted, why I agreed to speak on the subject. It's, it's perhaps not the most popular subject as of now. We are all passing through an, a period of public gloom about public institutions, all of them. Legislature, parliament, executive, you see somebody getting arrested every day. Uh, judiciary, certain comments being made at the highest level. And of course the press. We hear of the press, uh, editor being uh, caught on camera, etc. So the respect for institutions or the regard for institutions is that perhaps the worst after independence in the last two, three years. That in is a way, that in a way is a development that we need to take note of, not get frustrated. This happens in the cyclical, cyclical growth, the cyclical uh, history of a nation that the fact that we are passing through, let us say, a period of strain within our democracy does not mean that everything is over and everything black. For a few moments, let us go back and see one of the most uh, criticized and critical organizations or critical organs, the media, the Indian media. Just to give you the statistics, we have 82,000 newspapers in India. So people who think they can't read four newspapers a day, may kindly take note. Out of which, even if 10,000 are active, you know what that means. This is one of the most vibrant expressions of democracy any place in the world has. All over the world, many newspapers are not of that high quality. So there is no need to get frightened with either the numbers or the or the quality. Leadership is around 18 crore. Yes. Television, we have 850, 48 channels at now. So people who struggle with their uh, remote controls for uh, remote control for uh, trying to locate one among 100 channels may also kindly take note. This is the choice we have. Actually, out of them, about 450 to 500 are active in different languages. And since it costs money to get into the uh, dish TV or the cable operations, you see about 100, thankfully. Uh, this number, in my humble opinion, can't stay this way. It was like the early days of private airlines when everybody had a skycraft, this carrier, that carrier. Ultimately, they complete each other out and are left with only four, five. This will also happen, I am sure. Households watching uh, television is 17 crores, it's actually a little more than 17 crores. Now. And viewers is expected to be 750 million, 75 crores out of 120 crores a day. That leaves only a small fraction of internet users, because that is another form of media that's, that's going to take over. Internet users are 18 crores. And active member mobiles are subject to be 730 million or 73 crores. 73 crores active mobile sets. And if you go back to TV sets, you'll see the difference. And you'll get the point. Next. The size of the industry is moving from 82,000 crores. When we talk of money, 82,000 crores at present covering print, uh, radio, TV, films, uh, out of, uh, of uh, in, uh, digital media, and stated to become one lakh sixty-six thousand crores, more than double in exactly five years. It may actually cross this. The speed at which it is going, people who observed, uh, uh, this is a report of Vicky KPMG Buttress Borders by Price Waterhouse. Thanks. The 
this is in a very fast swift uh, recovery from India, from the glory of India, from the highest best moments of Baby Gone, to do great accidents, to do to political struggles, everything is now visible. When we fought out on the streets or in the gates of our village, there were no photographers. It worked. There are no photographers. Now, if you if you manage to push someone to come out on the newspapers the next morning or a PD, uh, the problem is which how I want to handle this instrument. The problem is the handling of it. We always see right now. I like to open the papers. Rape, murder, scam, and then there are these TV channels. Uh, which assume that the nation, I should have done your mark late, come up. Our own vice chancellor has finally come, is, let us give him a hand for coming late. Kumar, attendance of an answer. Why attendance have to be done? Why don't you just call it? It's difficult, but let's try to deck out the boom that one sees all around and come to the right as well. Okay, this is what my office case were making last night. What are you doing? Satisfied with you enough? That it is. It will be enough. We have to put in sounds and all that, and we'll be very displeased if I don't show them the sounds. But the amount of sounds I put in, I would have no scope for any speech. Uh, we are quite getting it. Basically, what we are hinting at is that if you look at the flip side of it all, high decibel, high voltage reported leads to a human cry, and then remedial action follows. This is actually a curative function within the institutions. If the institutions were capable of self-governance, where it were capable of putting their own errant members behind bars, it would not be left to the press, to the media, to the TV to come forward. So if there is a nature of house of vacuum, so whenever there is a disbalance, this thing occurs. So we see so far, because uh, I was a victim to him part of the history that little logo of Commonwealth Games, I think I am the only one in the group of ministers uh, who has not been sent to jail or pulled up. I said, no, that is because I was in charge of opening and closing ceremonies. Uh, so and that was left to creative people. But everybody else was, uh, was put to deep trouble. Uh, some are still lodged in uh, an uncomfortable places. Now, having said that, this action was initiated at the behest of the press. And the story, if you recall, The story was that uh, CAG broke, broke out report in the month of September. October was the month of the uh, Commonwealth Games. October. And nobody really noticed the story. But during the Commonwealth Games, just a few days before starting, one cameraman found one toilet or one sweet room. I've never been able to understand what he photographed. And that was, that went um, ballistic all over the world. In the Commonwealth Games, this is a state of our preparation. We saw that uh, toilet piece, ugly looking toilet piece, at least half a million times. And then follows water seepage. Rain gods were also not very kind to the organizers, so they came in in full fury. Uh, everything started leaking, public fury went up, and it ended only when the their, their, their chief organizers, were sent to the uh, call comfort of places. Okay, next. <laughs> These are four statements that speak of one of the highest positives anyone can think of in any nation. If you recall, ladies and gentlemen, there are but four large multi-ethnic nations in the world, just four. 
One, if you start from the West, is America, which has invited refugees, used to invite before H1P and other visas came up, talents from all over the world, from every different country, and then suddenly hardened up for various reasons. They have a schism between African Americans and the whites. But basically, any sociologist will tell you there is only one prevailing culture, and that is a white Anglo Saxon Protestant. The Kennedy family was not Protestant and therefore faced a lot of problems. Even if you are white and Anglo-Saxon, you were not Protestant family. Occasional, uh, let me say, occasional concessions are made to the darker skin, to, to such other uh, tribal groups like Protestants, but basically it continues to remain white, Anglo-Saxon and Protestant. So if you happen to come from Eastern Europe and your father given name is Wilhelm Bordenkov, your daughter makes you Bill Borden in exactly five years. So when the strategy becomes seven strategy, it goes on like that. So everybody has a shortened American name, it's only one culture. Move on, Russia. Russia has been, from the time of Peter the Great, moving towards the Russification of the world. From that century up to the Tsars, and then to the Soviet regime and its, and its, and its uh, was the occupation? I don't know. Where it's embracing of several republics from Belarus to um, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan. Language was one. Whether you like it or not, you speak Rusi. Culture was one, and whole social homogeneity was made around one direction. I went to Kazakhstan and I found that large parts of Kazakhstan had been populated by Russian people. So that they could um, they could integrate the culture, integrate the culture. So then we find a second example. Of course, mercifully, 14, 15 of these states have broken free, have declared independence, have moved on after the breakdown of the Soviet Union. But the central idea remains that of crucifixion. I'm talking purely in cultural terms. Move on to China. We have from the third century BC. From the period of Shi Huang, Shi Huang Di, the Sinoization of China, the homogenization of China. With one language, it was then known as Qin, now known as Mandarin, one people, Han, one philosophy, Confucianism or Communist Party, one ideal, one leader, and move forward. When you compare that with India, you will find that we continue to remain 24 distinct languages, each one prouder than the other. Each language is proud of the fact that it has 700,000 supporters, lakhs of supporters, and we continue to revel in the fact that we shall celebrate Pongal with as much weight as you celebrate Onam or you celebrate Durga Puja or Tiduzova. We continue to remain diverse, plural, in terms of ethnicity, in terms of language, in terms of food, in terms of even dress. But there is no doubt that we are one nation. The same nation that beat up Northeastern boys and girls in Delhi and other places, that threw them out of Bangalore on the pretext of um, an SMS text. Do you recall when boys, boys and girls were leaving Bangalore and so The same nation would wake up to make Mary Kong a national celebrating, a national symbol. This was achieved through various uh, historical moves, and one of them is the radio and TV. Akashwari began, in a way, the cultural unification of India, and like everything else in government, it started with a child, something government came and hit it. And that hitting, if you recall, was Radio Ceylon. We had a period when Pandit Eskar was the information minister for about 10 years um, and he believes sincerely that the culture of India is classical. The fact that we have only 1400 or 14,000 speakers speaking Sanskrit does not make a difference to him.